I talked to Keith Newmeyer recently about gold, silver, and a stock distribution for the shareholders of the company that he co-founded, First Mining Gold. And if you're one of those shareholders, I've got a quick update from the company CEO, Dan Wilton. And this is a sponsored post. You can keep that in mind as we're talking about First Mining Gold and Treasury Metals. But Dan is a fun guy, and he's got some great information in here about his thoughts on $6,000 gold and the value of gold versus silver. And yeah, you heard that right. Six thousand dollar gold so today we are talking to dan wilton the ceo of first mining gold dan how are you i'm very well and thanks for uh thanks for having me on the program here yeah thanks thanks for joining i think that uh we'll probably have a number of things to talk about but Maybe really quickly, uh, today gold is green. We've actually got gold prices going up right now, and, and that doesn't always match up with uh, the Fed talking. So I wonder uh, <laughs> if you have any ideas on, on inflation and I guess more specifically a disregard for inflation yeah. by, by, the, by the Fed here. Uh, maybe tell us what you think about purchasing costs and where, where you think that might be going in the next few months, years. Yeah, well, listen, I I, uh, I watch it with great interest, uh, you know, personally and professionally. I think um, this push in inflation is really only at a beginning. I think you've had the Fed, you know, trying to convince people that this is transitory inflation, but that's before we're seeing this inflation before we've really seen any kind of demand push, which is coming up now, right? And it's happening all over North America, all over the world. As we're coming out of the lockdowns from this pandemic, you are seeing real demand push. So for all that they want to talk about transitory inflation, two things. Number one, the inflation is pretty much at the highest levels we've seen in a generation right now. And number two, um, even if it is transitory, what they're talking about is you know, say it's, say it's 5% this year and next year, and it's not, right? You know, I think we all recognize that, uh, that it's higher than that. And we all feel it higher than that when we, when we, you know, when we go to Costco or we go to the grocery store. Um, sure. But that inflation is, by definition, kind of taking 10% of your wealth away. Right. And a lot of people don't think about it that way, but just think about your net worth being eroded by 10% over the next two years because the Fed can't fight inflation with higher interest rates. Yeah, they're running out of levers to pull. Well, the reason I bring that up, I think, is that kind of sets the stage in particular for gold. And uh, I did have a chance to talk to Keith Newmeyer a few weeks ago about some of the potential in particular about first mining gold. We talked about spring pole value milestones. And then how the current trading range of first mining gold is, is low compared to some of the more advanced stage gold developers. Maybe you could start out telling us a little bit about how your company valuation compares to peers. Yeah, I, the short answer is it's a lot lower. Uh, we trade very much at a discount to our peers where the average advanced gold developer would trade at a value of you know, 80 to $100 an ounce. Uh, we're trading at, you know, between 15 and 20, depending on the day. Uh, and if you look at kind of the, the multiple of that net asset value or fundamental value of advanced stage projects, pre-feasibility study or above, projects at our stage should trade at, you know, 0.4 to 0.7 times that net asset value. Um, you know, spring pool, we think when you back out the value of everything else we have in the company and recognizing that that everything else gives us an enormous amount of financial flexibility over the next couple of years, you still have spring pool that's trading at a very significant discount, like 0 0.1, 0 0.15 times its net asset value. So the value of spring pool in first mining should go up you know, three to five times as we continue to to advance the project and de-risk it. But that 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 is for a lot of companies that still don't have their permits and are, you know, are not financed and moving down that development path. So, um, you know, we think we're very, very undervalued relative to our peers, but I think that's a real opportunity for our shareholders now. 
Sure. Yeah, I had seen that on the the company presentation too, and and I'm pretty familiar with that 0.5 in and, and up valuation. Uh, so let's talk about Springpole. I know you have other assets, but Springpole is one of the largest undeveloped open pit gold deposits in Canada. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the production potential. Sure. And, you know, I think that's kind of what part of what frames Springpole as a really critical strategic asset is that it's one of very few uh, gold projects that can be developed that has the potential to produce more than 300,000 ounces a year. And when you look around the world at the number of projects that have that potential, uh, you're down to a very, very small handful. And if you're looking in what we'd call tier one jurisdictions, so good places to build, operate, and own mines, that number is even smaller. Okay, so we talked about valuation, we talked about production possibility, and a lot of those calculations for value, they're based around gold at $1,600. So I have to ask mm -hmm. what... Uh, what does your crystal ball tell you about the price of gold over the next few years? Well, I think apropos our discussion on inflation, um, you know, I think we're seeing gold slowly ticking up here. You know, I think there was there was a push to test it at the at the 1650, 1700 level. And I think, you know, it responded very well to fundamentals. The reality is gold is not pricing in uh, right now its role as an inflation hedge. And that will come because people are going to get concerned about protecting their wealth. And it doesn't take much of a much in a, of an investment in you know the insurance value of gold to be able to see it get to you know meaningful price increases. We're still in a position. A lot of people, again, this inflation, they don't think about this, but we're still in a position here of unprecedented negative real interest rates, right? Unprecedented in in generations where you have interest rates that are like real interest rates that are, you know, almost by definition here, you know, three and 4% negative. That's terrifying. But that's what's sort of holding up this, this asset bubble. Um, I think the gold price, the way that I typically think about it is peak to trough, right? I've lived through a few cycles. I've been sure. doing this for almost 30 years. And when you look back to the last cycle, and let's say 2002, 2003 with gold at $270, peak of the, peak of the cycle was 1900. So that's basically a, you know, call it a 6X trough to peak. Um, the trough of this gold price run since 20, you know, since 20, call it 2014, 2015, the real trough there in January 2016 would have been just below $1,100 an ounce. So let's call it $1,100. Um, what does that mean for potential for gold price peak to trough here? I think it could very easily be $6,000 and above. Now, I don't know that it settles out there. I think the gold price migrates to the marginal cost of production in the industry over the longer term. But as gold grades go down globally, as fewer mines come online, um, that production, average production cost is going to continue to go up, driven partly by inflation, um, but partly just by gold miners having to mine lower and lower grade resources to produce ounces. So yeah, I, I think uh, what's my, my near-ish term prediction, would I be pretty comfortable in saying I think gold could be above $3,000 in a, in a rational environment as it resets for kind of whatever the next leg looks like? Yeah. And could it overshoot that? I think it overshoot that substantially. So $6,000. <laughs> Can you do the quick number. math on that? I, one of our shareholders <laughs> called me uh, about six months ago and said, you know, listen, we're all invested in this because we're gold bugs, right? And, you know, we really believe it's going to $5,000. So what's the NPV per share when gold's $5,000? And we did that. <laughs> and it's, it's astounding, right? That's where, that's where this gets to be, you know, kind of in that $10 a share range or whatever. So, and that's just the math. Yeah. So how do we, why aren't we at $6,000 now? Why aren't we at $3,000 right now? Is it the scare of a rate hike? Just, is that priced in, do you think? I think that's part of it. I think there's always this near-term trading um, perspective on gold, which is, uh, you know, when you're in an environment where you can earn interest rates in other, you know, in other uh, asset classes, then, 
you know, gold becomes more relatively more expensive to hold. Uh, I think uh, it right now is just that people are trying to figure out and come to grips with, um, you know, gold as an inflation protection hedge. Um, people are trying to come to grips with what is the real impact of this inflation going to be. And, you know, I think you've seen gold kind of waiting for some signals. I think those signals are coming because the one thing that's very true is that the gold price is completely disregarding the amount of money that's been put into the system, right? And that is trillions and trillions of dollars of fiscal and monetary stimulus that's been put into the system around the world by every central bank, pretty much. So end of the year, uh, prices of gold. I, I, I just have to hear more about this $6,000 gold. <laughs> I think uh, end of the, yeah, end of the year, I am, I, I'd be surprised if we're not at 2000, but I think the last time I said, you know, uh, something like this, there's going to be a, a, a corrective overshoot. There always is in this sector. And the real question is when, when gold starts fulfilling its role as, you know, kind of your insurance uh, and, you know, wealth preserver, and you start getting a little bit of the funds flows coming into gold again, um, I think you're going to see it go substantially higher. All right. So switch gears for a minute. Uh, one of the reasons we're talking today is the approved treasury metals distribution. And that's yes. basically people who bought into first mining gold prior to, I think it was the 14th. I don't know when the actual cutoff was, but they now have a stake in a new company at treasury Indeed. metals. And yeah. some of them might not know anything about that company. So I thought that uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about it. And I know you can't really give trading advice directly. <laughs> so, but maybe tell us a little bit, like why would a new shareholder who might not know much about pre about treasury metals hold the stock rather than sell for quick cash? Yeah, well, listen, I think it's a, it's a great question. And I can tell you, honestly, myself, I won't give trading advice, but I'll tell you what I did. Uh, you know, last week I exercised 750,000 options so that I could get more treasury medals in this distribution. Uh, I'm a director of treasury. So, you know, we really helped put the company together by selling them our gold loan project last year. And what they have is, I think, one of the most buildable projects in the gold sector. Unbelievable infrastructure. It's a few hundred meters off the Trans-Canada Highway. You've got high tension power lines that go over the project. Like the infrastructure just doesn't get any better to build a mine anywhere in the world. They've scoped a really interesting project that I think is going to get better as they continue to drill it. They're in the middle of 60,000 meters of infill drilling to, to further solidify the resource. Uh, we've hired a great CEO who's now been there a little bit more than six months, and he's building out his team, uh, put together a really good team that's ready to get this project to that construction decision in a couple of years. So, you know, I, I again, we're not, it's not a financial advice, uh, advice category, but we remain as first mining, the largest shareholder of treasury. Um, you know, we still own 20 million shares. The average uh, consensus research analyst uh, price target on the stock is 250 ish. So, and that's it's covered, it's well covered, covered by seven research analysts. So, you know, I think there is real fundamental value there. But what I find most interesting is a lot of people thought this distribution coming out in the hands of our shareholders was a real concern because, oh, everyone's just going to dump, dump the shares. And I think that does a real disservice to the people who, you know, to, to our shareholders in terms of that, that perspective. We have great, sticky, fundamental value-based long-term shareholders. I think they're delighted to be getting this distribution. And, you know, this is fulfilling on one of Keith's promises, uh, you know, from years gone by about us continuing to, to um, you know, to return value to shareholders this way. But I think you're as likely or more likely to see our shareholders increasing their position on treasury rather than decreasing. I'll get a link to the company profile for treasury metals, just like it will for first mining gold. So great takeaway though is don't sell it until you look into it. Again, that's not trading advice. That's just, that's just good common sense. 
Oh, on, on the on the topic we were saying before of you know trading multiples for advanced stage developers, this is a developer that has its federal environmental approvals, yeah. um, and it's trading at uh, right now I think 0.2 or 0.3 times its net asset value. Of that project that project has a net asset value of 300 and 330 million Canadian at a $1,600 gold price, and again, really significant leverage to the upside. I'm going to switch gears again. Uh, you mentioned Keith. Keith Newmeyer co-founded the company and First Majestic Silver is an investor. Knowing that uh, Springpole's profile has quite a bit of silver in addition to the gold, I'm curious what you think about the upside of both silver and gold. And I guess to, to put a finer point on that, do you think one of those metals will outperform the other in the next few years? I don't know that it will. Um... And part of that is, I think, when you look over the course of the last years, I, I think silver's had quite a bit of catch up versus gold. And this is just anecdotally for me, but you think back a couple of years and, you know, we all know the, the silver price pushing, you know, from kind of 14 to 26, 27, 28, and the gold price pushed from 1300 to, excuse me, to 1800. So I think silver's had a bit of catch up. Um, uh, silver is always more volatile and I think more uh, prone to bigger, quicker moves. Um, the way that I think about it, uh, you know, both are, are, are great stores of value and, and kind of hedges. Um, uh, silver, I think, is a little bit better to trade and gold is a little bit better to hold from my perspective, but that's, you know, that's one person's view. Uh, but gold, again, for me, um, I think uh, just represents a little bit more of that, uh, more of a hold, less of a trade type opportunity. I don't have my video on, so you can't see me smiling, but you are one of the few people that I've heard who has, has actually not given the industrial use of silver and therefore silver is the stronger uh, asset and I will give away my bias right away. I, I am on team gold personally. So <laughs> uh, I like to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think, I think again, for that, for that insurance scenario and, and kind of what we may be getting into in this period of unprecedented macroeconomic potential turmoil. Um, I think you also just have the liquidity in the gold sector that, um, sure it's going to position it better for people to, to preserve wealth, I think, than, than silver might. But that's, you know, that's one person's view. Two people's view. Okay. <laughs> Two people's view. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, Dan, we covered quite a bit. Do you feel like we missed anything? No, I think, we, I think we've got it all. We've, uh, we've touched on a bunch of the high points. So really appreciate you taking the time and, and great to connect. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get some links to both uh, First Mining Gold and Treasury Metals. I think there's uh, more information to be found there. That'll have all of your contact information. I imagine if anyone wants to find out more, they just contact you. Yeah, absolutely. And come on the website, www.firstmininggold.com or send an email to info at firstmininggold.com. Uh, all of it comes right in. So uh, absolutely know where to find us. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining today. I appreciate your time. Well, thank you very much and look forward to connecting again soon. And for everyone else, thank you for watching. I hope you're doing well. Take care.